How about now? How about me? How about how? Can anybody hear me? Hi. <laughs> Dakaruni. <clears throat> what are we talking about? Uh, why don't we talk about the road trip to start? Mm -hmm. And then we've got uh, GM. How do you say his last name? Mikkim? From City National Arena, this is Studio 31's presentation of Nighttime at Noon, uh, broadcast uh, twice today, both at noon and at 4 o'clock, uh, replacing the scheduled, uh, regularly scheduled, VGK Insider Show. Darren Millard uh, hosting along with Darren Elliott, who we've spent a lot of time this week uh, together as the Vegas Golden Knights uh, launch through a week-long road trip uh, that is uh, halfway complete. A one nothing victory of the Washington Capitals and a 4-3 overtime loss to the Carolina Hurricanes. We'll get into the road trip, uh, what's on the horizon with the All-Star game to come, a lot of league news to tell you about today as things are shuffling around, and the general manager of your Vegas Golden Knights, Kelly McCrimmon, who is with the team uh, in Florida right now as they have a day off before the date against the Panthers tomorrow. Uh, Kelly McCrimmon will stop by the program in just a little bit. Uh, but Darren Elliott, uh, big picture-wise, uh, two games into this road trip, coming off a homestand, which at times flattened out. What have you made of this one nothing win and then rallying to get the single point last night? Three points, possible four. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say successful so far. Cornell guy showing off the math. That, that's what's <laughs> happening right there. Yeah, that's what I was doing. He's, he's, he's uh, going three points uh, out of four. Well, and, and I didn't think you had much going on through uh, the first two periods last night. Uh did what you had to do in the, the, the first period. You, the game didn't get away from you. Laurent Bressois returns to the net after having, what, uh, 23 days of inactivity. Uh, didn't get much practice time in there. Comes in against a really good Carolina Hurricanes team. Plays well. Um, I, I thought getting a point, when you're down 3-1, less than seven minutes to go on mm -hmm. the road against Carolina, you got to be happy. I, to me, the way I put it is you gained a point. You didn't lose the, 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 even though you got the game to, to overtime, you you didn't lose a point. You gained a point last night. That's the way I look at it. Three points, I'm, I'm happy. First shutout of the season mm -hmm. in the road trip opener against the Washington Capitals. I wasn't sure it could get much better than that. But uh, the game against the Carolina Hurricanes definitely had its high moments uh, as well. When you put the two together, right. uh, given the opponents on this road trip, Three out of four is a magnificent start. Yeah, and, and Robin Leonard was, you know, really, really good. Uh, you know, in that first game, gets the, fir the first shutter of the season. Uh, his game was rock solid. Um, you know, he'd had, he'd been getting, he'd, he'd been okay, but he'd been a little bit leaky. Uh, I, I thought that was as solid a game as you'd seen in a couple months from him. So all, all in all, like I said, so far so good. 
My buddy John Hamm, I don't know whether you've seen the commercials, is uh, looking for work uh, right now as he goes through uh, everything that's uh, available uh, <laughs> on the different channels. Uh, wow. Have, have you seen that commercial? No, I had yeah, not. It's, it's awesome. It's like, uh, this person's in this movie, this person's in that. What about me? Yeah. Uh, so my buddy John Hamm's uh, looking for a role Are you guys right really now. buddies? Yeah. Yep. I didn't know that. Uh, well, he's been on the podcast. Big timer. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't want to like name drop, been. but uh, John Hamm has been on the podcast. Uh, so he's looking for work. I think that he could be the main player in maybe play Pete DeBoer's role in the movie about the Vegas Golden Knights. Except if you took what Vegas is doing this year right. and put it into a screenplay, it would be thrown back by all the, the hockey people saying, that's not realistic. You'd never have a team win like that. True. Uh, I, I don't think that I've seen it. I've been in the game a long time. Um you have guys step up from time to time and you know fill certain roles, um, but different guys every night. <laughs> like like last night's game, really. Uh, like, yeah, not, oh Nolan Patrick's gonna have a a game. Right? He's gonna have a goal and assist for the first time in like three years. What? Yeah. First multi. It was three years. I know. I know. I do my homework. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What? Lauren Persuas is going to play really good goal, hasn't played in three and a, three and a half weeks. Unreal. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, every single night, something, how many times we, we joke off air, uh, well, we joke on air about mm -hmm. saying uh, they found a way to win. That's our cliche. That every single night, that's kind of what the go-to line has been. And if you went into last night uh, with the storylines, the return of Mark Stone, uh, Zach Whiteclouds uh, in the fold, Nick Haig uh, returned the game before, Laurent Bressois in that, you go, okay, it's, it's got to function and funnel somewhere around those guys. And Haig did have the, the big, big right. shot. But the newly named Hap line has been the difference in the first two games of this road trip. And I didn't anticipate having that on my order of things to talk about with – Howden, uh, Mario, and Patrick. Nice job on the half line. Yeah, they, they they were really good. And as you said, there was all kinds of special teams play, which cuts into a third or fourth line's ability to get on the ice. Uh, and yet they got on the ice almost 12 minutes. That, that's that's a lot uh, for, for their role. And why not? It, they were playing that well. And um, out of nowhere, you know, you're down to nothing. Games, you're really not generating very much. And it's a broken line. Colasar's out there with them. He strips the puck on the forecheck cleanly, mm -hmm. and they get the goal. It, it, it's been like that all season long. A play ignites a team, and it's like only one goal. Carolina, oh, they score again. And then they restore the two-goal lead, and... It's like, I think it was like uh, 6.54 left in the game. Make it 3-2. Still, okay, there's hope. And then, like you said, a great shot by Nick Haig ties the game, and you, and you get a point. Uh, it's, it's been like that all season long. Nick Haig scores that goal, but it's not off the Hager bomb shot. No. <laughs> Which is a great line. It is. It is <laughs> one of the Hager best. <laughs> it, it, I just, uh, I need him to score more with it to, to make it a, a regular thing. But it comes off the wrist shot. How did that beat Frederick Anderson so cleanly? Well, I mean, you know how it, the game is scouted so so well now, right? It's, but you're playing a different conference. I haven't seen anything. They might not have any tape on on the Hager bomb. Maybe mm -hmm. they maybe they have a oh yeah, this kid can shoot it. Be be careful. But it's a slap shot. Nobody knows that he can sling it like that. They don't have any tape. So Freddie Anderson's like, he's not aware. He's like, okay, the kid's stepping into a wrist shot. Oh, wow, can he sling it? Now he knows. Because the reaction was, I'm in good position. He's challenging. It's one-on-one. -on -one. It's over his shoulder. His glove, you go, oops, by me. You know what uh, told me that he, he was surprised? Not was, me, not my explanation. <laughs> well, your explanation was great, great too. But there's there's goaltender reactions. There's uh, you look to the net, you look at your glove, uh, you look at if it was tipped. If, if it was tipped, you always see this the goaltender. This coming from a goalie that's been beaten many times. <laughs> cleanly, <laughs> cleanly. This is why I know that uh, that it beat him cleanly. Uh, but then he looked he looked back to see who shot it. I know. That's what told me that he was he was and, a little and bit surprised. Never. He's like surprised it. Who was that guy? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> trying to trying to figure it out. So, do you get greedy 
based on three points out of four, or is hold that question for the GM? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. You have to. We have to ask Kelly that. I think you do. I think the expectations change every single result. Every every single game is like you're one zero and one. Yeah, if you're zero and two, it's like wow, you just you're just trying to get a win. You're not zero and two, thankfully. So you're one zero and one. It's like yeah, yeah, they change. You know, I I think they do every in this in this business. Okay, we, yeah, we want to win the next one, and then they change again when you go to Tampa. Uh, we had uh, another brilliant performance out of Shea Theodore. Oh. Are we in the starting stage of something? great from Shea Theodore. There's been little signs mm -hmm. here and there because everybody wants him to get back to that bubble performance where he was and had us all talking about Norris trophies in the future. And that's a that's the elite of the game. It's it's not a knock if you're not in that group because it's such a small uh, little bit uh, collection of players. But what you've seen between the Montreal game and then what he did against Washington, and then last night, eating up a lot of minutes again. Yeah, he was the leader. Uh, substantial. Uh, it's usually Petrangelo. He was a little over 22, if I remember correctly. And Shea Theodore was almost, uh, Theodore was almost 27 minutes last night. So he was out there like every other shift. Get mm -hmm. out there. Um, maybe. It, it's hard to sustain it. And what what went, have you liked about his game then? Um He's just, it's, obviously he's not thinking about it. He's just going out and, and doing. Um, his skating is at the forefront of everything when, he, that, when he's going well and he's elite right now. He's an elite skater, but when it's leading, like now everything looks effortless. It leads to everything else uh, passing-wise um, and, and offensively. So w when he went through a funk there, and it was for a while, couldn't get pucks to the net. It, it, it looked like it hurt his confidence a little bit. When he's skating like this, so well, dancing almost, mm -hmm. um, and he, he gets closer to the net. When you get closer to the net, you get better looks. When you get better looks, you're more creative and you're able to do more things offensively. That's where he is right now. Because he went a long time without a power play goal. He, he, he was tossing Frisbees to the net. They were just never getting there. They were swatting him away. Although he did score on two self titled muffins well year. right sometimes they, they the, find the a change up. to get there but and he's on the ice lot so he's throwing lots of muffins to mm -hmm. the net and sometimes i guess you get lucky but for the most part nothing was getting through uh, the returns last night start with brassois and we'll move our way up the lineup uh what do you think of the goaltender i thought it was ex excellent and then, you know and he gives up four on what 30 shots that's that uh Great save percentage in the in the 80s, right? You're mm -hmm. you're playing goal in the 80s. It's like, hey, four goals on 38.65 or whatever that equates to. This era, that's not good enough. It was excellent. You get a, got a point as the backup goalie on the road against an elite team. You did your job. So so to me, I thought he was really good. D didn't give up a lot of second opportunities. Um, was rock solid in his positioning. I, I thought that's exactly what you want your backup goalie to do. Zach Whitecloud misses a couple. Returned to the fold last night. Probably mm -hmm. took a while to, to find his footing. Yeah, I, I would say if you ask Zach, he said, I was okay. Mm -hmm. I got in there and it probably felt fast for him. It looked fast to him. Um, he didn't generate anything really offensively and just uh, was kind of treading water all night in his own zone. Do you like that me. pairing? Because uh, Theodore can bounce back and forth on, on both sides. Yeah, we say that. I, I like him better. You're, you're not a, a big fan, right? No, I, I like him better on his natural side, yeah. his left side. But, you know. What about Mark Stone? I mean, he must be just frustrated beyond belief, but excited uh, like crazy to get back because of the stops and starts to his season. Correct. That's, uh, I, I'm probably the same way. It's like, okay, he was back. Mm -hmm. Didn't really accomplish that much. Uh, created on the game time goal, the turnover in the neutral zone. Um, so that's a big. You were the first one to saw that, and <laughs> I looked up, and the play was already going uh, up the ice. I was writing something down, and when we saw the replay, it was this the greatest, sneakiest, not talked about moment in the game. Well, because that's that's part of his brilliance, right? He has that 
tremendous ability to, to pick the pocket of the opponent. He has that long stick, great reach, great feel for the game. Um, strips the puck, plays going the other way. It doesn't really get noticed in the moment. That's what uh, the analytics folks do, who, who, who creates plays in, in the moment. He did that. Um, so, so that was good. But the, otherwise, he didn't really notice him very much in that game. Um, <clears throat> he, he, good that he's back. Cross our fingers. Let's hope that he stays back, I guess, is where we're at right now. He's the captain. He's one of the best players. Yep. He's an all-star. But when Ashley Bice showed the graphic last night in the pregame yeah. show, with Mark Stone and without Mark Stone, still a winning record without mm -hmm. him, and still some pretty good numbers, but were you surprised at the difference between things like goals per game, power play, penalty killing? Because the gap between the two was more significant than I expected. Yeah, I, w I was probably a little surprised that it was much better on the penalty kill. Because I, I, when I think of penalty kill, I think uh, they've been a good penalty killing team for a long time, better under Pete DeBoer, not so good this year. Um, but I think of Carlson and Smith as a tandem. And when I think of penalty killing and Vegas success, I think of those two, not so much Mark Stone. Um, so, so that surprised me. Um, uh, but so it, it reinforces his impact? Yeah, it does. And um, overall, you would think, yeah, you'd be a better team with Mark Stone. But uh, to the degree, more than half a goal a game, I know scored. I know. But you think of the better on the on the power play. We we knew that early in the year from a, uh, another uh, graphic we'd had. But overall, yeah, you're a better team with Mark Stone. Um, analytics prove it, and it, like I like I like what you said. It, it's where the eyeball test and, and analytics converge. Yeah, you know? because he's not a he's not an eyeball dream. No. Mark Stone. No, but. And analytics, he's he's an overachiever. Right, like, it's crazy. But when you see the two, like that play uh, on the That's sideboards, right. if That's you know right. what you're looking for, the the eyeball does meet the analytics it, it head is. on. That's right. That's uh, what they mean. We've got some players that are, are in the uh, wings. Alec Martinez and Jack Eichel are on the road trip. Max Pacioretty is also there. Uh, Riley Smith's in COVID protocol. We'll go through uh, their status as we continue. And Kelly McCrimmon is going to join the show uh, in a little bit. Give me two things that you want to talk to the general manager about uh, before we take a break. One thing, how do you evaluate this season? Like, how, like we, we banter back and forth and say it's a bunch of uh, vignettes strung together. Um, you could say Caddyshack. <laughs> Bunch of skits. <laughs> Bunch of skits. I'll go with a vignette. Um, Nobody but, knows what a vignette is. <laughs> Nobody knows what a vignette is. Okay, skits. We'll go with skits. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, how does he evaluate the season? Mm -hmm. Like, how does he take a look at it and go, okay, where are we? What, what do we have here? I mean, it, there's got to be some, you know, we'll ask him. I won't answer my own question. I think he evaluates it as a pro scout. He evaluates the players individually, yeah, he, not as a whole. Right. That's my guess. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, I guess I'll have to ask him something else. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you can still ask him. I'm, I'm curious whether or not uh, I'm, I'm anywhere near close to the to the right topic. Right, and and, and then, uh, again, it's like, uh, what, is he, what does he envision? Like, mm. can, can, you, like can, you, can you go from what you've seen to what does he hope to see? You know, what, that, that's kind of what... what what I like, like that to talk too. about. If you want to uh, submit a question, we may ask your question uh, <laughs> to the VGK Twitter Maybe account. Maybe I'll just ask. No, them. no, no. Well, you can ask some of the some of the viewers and the oh, listeners as we're on we we're on the, all of our social media channels That's and right. we're on People Fox can. Sports Las Vegas. Uh, if you uh, are listening right now, send us a question and we may ask your question live on the air. Who's going to answer? Dak is going to take. And Dak's going to ask uh, for the questions to us. And okay. if it's better than Darren Elliott's questions. It may sit here. Hits gets next uh, time. Parked. Next time. Uh, we've got Kelly McCrimmon coming up in, in just a little bit, uh, sort of a mid-season review as the Golden Knights enter the second half of the season last night. The spectacular Hotel California in Santa Barbara, California, is the newest exciting addition to the Foley Entertainment Group, Experience. You can experience an extraordinary stay in one of 121 luxury guest rooms and suites and taste the region's finest wine at Foley Food and Wine Society's Tasting Room and treat yourself to unparalleled massages at Majorelle, the Moroccan-inspired spa, all in the heart of the American Riviera. Designed for domestic and international guests alike, Hotel California is the perfect destination for any traveler seeking one-of-a-kind experiences. Hotel California is in Santa Barbara is the premier urban destination. Visit hotelcalifornian.com.
kellymccrimmon.com to book your stay today. Kelly McCrimmon is coming up in just a little bit. We'll also bring you some league news as uh, the Vancouver Canucks have a new general manager uh, in their fold. This is Nighttime at Noon on Fox Sports Las Vegas. very good team on the other side that uh, you know is almost at full health and rested and uh, you know our situation I think uh, you know this was a tough game on the schedule for us and uh, you know I think over a long season um, it's important you find a way to to get points in games like this maybe you don't deserve a point uh, you know but we hung around our goalie was really good you know, we were opportunistic and uh, you know, got, got an important point uh, in a tough situation. We're back to nighttime at noon on your home for the Vegas. Pete DeBoer following the game against the Carolina Hurricanes, uh, evaluating his club's performance uh, from Studio 31, Darren Millard, and along with Darren Elliott. Uh, last night was one of those results where if you're L.A., if you're Anaheim, you're Edmonton or Calgary, you're kicking a garbage can because you think you, you got an opportunity for Vegas to get nothing uh, on a back-to-back -back and they find a way to, to walk out of the first two games of the road trip with three or four points. Yeah, and Pete doesn't really have a future in radio given a short answer. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I loved it. Uh, we, we got uh, plays by defenseman last night, Nick Hag, and uh, we talked about Shea Theodore, but uh, he did make the, the effort and sort of drove the Howden goal. Uh, that goes off his thumb, which was a, a weird bouncer uh, that, that goes in, uh, continued to generate 
offense from from the blue line and the aggressiveness is a huge huge focus it's so much a part of the game uh, it, it drives a, a stat that you were marveling over yesterday about breakaways and good teams and bad teams um, you have to have your defenseman committed to being part of the attack if you don't you're not going to be successful in this league it's just plain and simple and, and this goes back and it doesn't it shouldn't be surprising. Um, you go back to Mike Madano, uh, Steve Eiserman. When when coaches like Ken Hitchcock and Scotty Bowman got those all stars, those superstars, those Hall of Famers to buy in and commit defensively, because prior to that, the best players didn't really have to commit defensively. Um, when they did, your best athletes now. We're taking a certain amount of energy um, and effort away from just offense. So obviously it was going to be harder to score because they're good skaters and a certain amount of energy now isn't being committed to offense, being committed to defense. And they're your best athletes. So they were going to be good at it. So scoring is going to go down, and it did in the 90s. So for a long period of time, they call it dead puck era, mm -hmm. you had essentially three on five, maybe three and a half, some defense would jump. So for, you had to find a way, and it took a long time for the game to evolve. The rules caught up. And when you say three on five, you mean the defense three, didn't? So, so you didn't really have, you, you, you were committed, to five back pressure. So you had five men committed for the longest time to playing defense. Once those all-star guys, everybody's committed to playing defense. Mm -hmm. But you only had three forwards, and partially, some teams committed somewhat at 5.5 .5 even strength, committed offense. Because you played you, safe. You did, right. Mm -hmm. You didn't have the same commitment to offense that you did to defense for a long time in this league. Now you've come full circle. The best teams, all five guys on the ice, when you have the puck, are committed. You committed defensively, 5.5. Five. Defensively, we don't have the puck. All five are committed to defense. But getting it back, you talk about puck placement, um, managing the puck. Yeah. But that means getting it back as quickly as you possibly can. Five guys, when you don't have it, get it back. Five guys, when you do have it, committed to trying to score. That's what the best teams are doing. And that's why the Vegas Golden Knights with Shea Theodore and not just Shea Theodore. Braden McNabb has the same license and expectation to jump into the play as the fifth or sixth defenseman, as does but Alex Petrangelo and Shea Theodore as the one or two. Is defenseman. that unique to the Golden Knights? No, it is not. All the best teams. You, okay. You're only going to be a good team if you have all five guys committed when you have the puck to being part of the flow offensively. That's been the way the game has evolved. We've gone from playing it safe mm -hmm. to the great John Tortorella quote yes. from a couple of years ago that is... To quote John Tortorella, safe is death. Right. And, you know, he said that, though. That was going back to when they won the Stanley Cup. That's a long time ago, early 2000s, 2004, I think. It, it took a long time for that quote to really catch up to being, because he had a lot of guys, Jason Cullimore, mm -hmm. like some guys that were slow-footed and not really, it, that was more about the like aggressive forecheck, mm -hmm. not so much about, five guys being engaged in the attack now you need all five guys well, okay i'll give you a more modern yeah. example of this because you brought up the breakaways yep. and we're going to do this tomorrow night I on know. the on the television yep. side on the pregame show 3 30 pregame show on at&t sportsnet these are the top five teams when it comes to most breakaways allowed number five is la four is tampa three is st louis Two is Vegas, and number one is Florida. And Florida and Vegas play tomorrow night, so it could be a shootout back and forth. What do all those teams have in common? Playoff position. The teams with the fewest breakaways allowed, Montreal, Philadelphia, Buffalo, Arizona, Ottawa. Easy to see what they have in common. They stink. Oh, I, sorry. So they, they're outside of playoff position <laughs> is how I would probably phrase it more politically. <laughs> so the fewest breakaways, and I, you would think it would be the opposite. The bad teams will give up more breakaways, right. and the good teams will give up fewer. And that's what used to be like 80s, pre-night, right? That's how mm -hmm. it would have been 
way back in the day because it, it was wide open, so the lousy teams giving up breakaways all over the place. But now, like you said, if you're a bad team, right, you haven't committed your defense, so, so no, your defense is back because they haven't committed to, to a flow game where all five are committed. So you might give up an, a, a, a breakaway, but that's all you're giving up as a good team. You give up the odd breakaway. The other thing is, if you're a bad team, like those out of the playoff teams, you're spending a lot of time in your own zone. Mm. So you, there's lots of offense generated against you on the cycle. That doesn't count as being giving up breakaways. So I, I think those are the other things not factored into that. But so it is interesting, though. The top five in breakaways allowed are all playoff teams. All, all uh, good teams, uh, actually. All elite teams. Yeah. Uh, that's just a reflection of how aggressively Correct. they pursue it. Correct. And then you chip it and they're gone and it's okay. But don't forget, a breakaway against a good team means you have, probably have a good goaltender and it's still only a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. <laughs> it's one one attacker against against a netminder. We have Kelly McCrimmon coming up in just a little bit. Uh, send your questions via Twitter to uh, Golden Knights' uh, Twitter handle and uh, we will go through it. Uh, Dak's going to peruse and see if they are better questions than Darren Elliott is going to ask. And we may just ask your question uh, on the air uh, to the Vegas Golden Knights general manager as the Golden Knights are 10 games above 500. Three of four points on this road trip uh, and Kelly McCrimmon coming up in just a little bit. First, some league news. And the Vancouver Canucks have been busy this week uh, hiring their hockey operations and their management staff. And the latest hire is Patrick Alvin, who has been named the general manager of the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, he will work uh, along with Jimmy Rutherford, who took over and is uh, assembling this group. And uh, Alvin comes over from the Pittsburgh Penguins, where Rutherford Rutherford's. knows exactly uh, what he's like. Yeah, I don't know much about him because he's kind of worked in the back room, uh, behind the scenes. Uh, Jim Rutherford knows him very well, having worked with him in Pittsburgh. Um, he becomes the first uh, Swedish train, born and raised, uh, Swedish uh, general manager in the National Hockey League. So again, it's it's interesting, um, the, the more recent hires coming from different backgrounds, um, leading teams, uh, females, um, Europeans, agents, uh, agents. So, um, although Pierre Lacroix, way back when, right, but not many s since. Not not too mm -hmm. many. Bill Zito uh, in Florida now. There's there's a there's a couple. Yeah, few, it, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, but uh, mostly because they'd have to take pay cuts. Exactly. I think. Um, all kidding aside. Um, so, uh, it it's a, uh, you know, it 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 is a you know, a modern business. Um, the, the NHL. And it can come from a lot of different places now in terms of being a general manager. Mark Stone very much looking forward to his first All-Star Game appearance yeah. next week. And now he's going to have one of his best friends also participating in the weekend as Brady Kachuk has been uh, added to the list for the Atlantic Division. The Ottawa Senator forward will replace Drake Batherson. Kind of cool that uh, that Kachuk, who was in that last man in uh, yeah. voting, I didn't get it. But he and Mark are so tight. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. I... I uh... Well, Brady lived it with the Stones <coughs> that's right. I when, I, when that's he right. broke I into the league. I knew that story. I, I was, uh, at first I was, I was sorry for Batherson, the way he got hurt. Let's, we'll get into that in a second. I know. And, but I was excited. Oh, maybe Marshall Soul. Oh, it's Eastern. It's on the other right. side. Right. Yeah. So wrong, wrong division. Yeah. Wrong division. Um, but, yeah, that, that, that's cool for, you know, for Kachucks and, and for, for Mark Stone uh, as well. But not very cool for Batherson. No. So Drake Batherson was the nominee from the Ottawa Senators. He is out after being injured last night in the game against the Buffalo Sabres. He was pursuing a puck behind the net, and Buffalo goaltender Aaron Dell left the puck. And call it what it is, it was a yeah, cheap shot. It was. He jutted out. You never expect the goaltender to initiate contact there, and now Batherson's hurt. Yeah, and it, was, it, it wasn't much. It was an elbow as Batherson's cutting around the net, drops his right flying, shoulder. Right? He's flying, full speed, uh, pursuing the defenseman on the forecheck as he's going around the net and just thrown off uh, Kilter a little bit by the, uh, the elbow by the goaltender. And as you mentioned, forward never expects that. And because of that, he crashes into the boards and uh, is going to be out quite a while. Mm -hmm. Look like an ankle. Uh, and Aaron Dell faces a player safety meeting. Yeah, he should. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, this will be a terrible thing to admit. <laughs> like, it's something that 
I would do when I was angry. And, and it's a, a lot it's a, of years ago. Though. It's a jerk move. It is. You wait till tomorrow night. <laughs> uh, it's a jerk move. <laughs> you but, wouldn't do it in the men's league. I hope not. <laughs> But uh, but it was one of those ones. It was it was uh, it was not very kind. Uh, we'll take a break when we come back. The general manager of the Vegas Golden Knights, Kelly McCrimmon, will pop on the program. This is nighttime at noon. Simulcast on Fox Sports Las Vegas. Golden Knights with a, a couple more games on the road trip. Three games before the NHL All-Star Weekend in Las Vegas. Uh, rolling into South Florida tomorrow night against the Panthers. And then finish off the road trip against the Tampa Bay Lightning. And uh, we'll wrap up the pre-All-Star game schedule uh, versus the Buffalo Sabres. Darren Millard along with Darren Elliott. This is nighttime at noon. Simulcast on Fox Sports Las Vegas and uh, the VGK Insider Show. Pleased to be joined now by the general manager of the Vegas Golden Knights, uh, Kelly McCrimmon, who's on the road with the team uh, through the first uh, two games. Uh, it's sort of midway through the road trip, midway through uh, the the season. So we'll do a bit of a, a retrospective and evaluation on, on what your impressions are of this group. Uh, but uh, just more recently, uh, three or four points on this road trip, uh, you have to be impressed. We can't hear Kelly, so we'll uh, we'll reconnect uh, with Kelly in just a little bit. But uh, as they go through Florida and Tampa Bay, talk about like you could make a case all these games: Washington, Carolina, Tampa Bay, Florida are all the toughest on the road trip individually. I could I could try and sell you on that. That that's a tough road trip. Yeah, and there was a time when. Uh... You throw in the uh, now defunct uh, Atlanta Thrashers, and that was called the Southeast mm -hmm. Division. 
uh, all those teams. Can't say that anymore. Uh, the, the teams have drafted well. Um, and, you know, Washington has won a Stanley Cup. Tampa's won the last two Stanley Cups. Carolina used to be hit or miss. They went to the Stanley Cup a couple times, won it once. Um, you know, so it, it's, a, it's a difficult task. Florida has been hunting and pecking and searching for, for quite some time. Uh, but they are absolutely scoring at a rate that will uh, uh, make for an exciting opponent uh, tomorrow night. Does Florida get the respect that they deserve? Or well, I think they don't deserve it yet. Okay, I, I don't think they yeah. do. Um, I, again, maybe I've seen them. Maybe I'm jaded because I've done so many bad hockey games there over the no, years. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to get that out of your. It, it is. I mean, with nobody in the building. Uh, thrash hockey on a Monday night against Florida. No, I mean, just nobody in the building. Not a lot going on. Uh, I'm happy for the fans. Um, I, I wish, and, and I can understand why they haven't turned out yet, um, you know, to the degree that uh, you would have hoped with the, with the talent that they have and they've had for a couple of seasons. Um, but they're, they're a good hockey team now. They're fun to watch. They play an exciting brand of hockey. And bringing it all full circle, Andrew Burnett, former thrasher, mm. going behind the bench um, and, and – Having them do so well, uh, one of my favorite guys that I, that I ever met along uh, my long journey in the in the loop, Andrew Burnett, uh, one of the good guys in the game. Florida is battling Tampa Bay for first place in that division. Also includes uh, Toronto, so it's a it's a yeah, very top he top heavy division. Uh, Tampa continues to be the measuring stick, though, and that's oh, yeah. who they will wrap up the road trip against on Saturday. And, and you have to give them credit because. They've had to make, as they've won championships, they've had to shed players as, as salary cap imposes. I mean, you win, you have to pay guys, can't pay certain guys, they have to go, and they've been able to fill in. Um, they've kept their cornerstone uh, pieces, Stamkos, Hedman, and Vasilevsky, the goaltender. Don't forget Kucherov. And Kucherov. They've kept the four, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, it's... Uh, every, you don't want to call the role players, but the, the other players that have become supporting cast guys, and they've just brought and filled in. So they've done they've done what you're supposed to do, and they look poised. Whether they win it again, they look like they'll be in position to uh, to defend it uh, strongly. Anyway, I hope we get them in the in the playoffs again because oh. that that just lit things up. It's been a, a somewhat of a geographical rival, but that's that that was it. But the playoff series, is, right? I know it, it spilled over to the preseason this year. <laughs> Where's Sam Bennett getting uh, getting into it? And so forth. And by the way, he's been a great add uh, to to Florida. Yeah, uh, Florida is. Uh, I, I think that. I mean, that's the thing, right? That's. I, I liked. Uh, I, I heard an interview. I don't know. Last week, week before, uh, and Andrew Burnett, because he's been on that coaching staff for several years, he said, "Look, playing them last year, the way we the divisional play." That made us better. Playing Tampa that many times in the playoffs, you can you can hang your head because we couldn't get past. Oh, they're in our division. Oh, that's not fair. It's like that showed us what it's going to take to be a championship team. And I remember Barry Trotz when they came in as a an expansion team when the Detroit Red Wings were at their peak of power. Nashville. Nashville was yeah. Barry Trotz was head coach there. For such a long time and you would think oh yeah you expect you have no ch he goes that made us better it, it showed us what the path we had to be on to be a playoff team to be a championship team and it, that's the only way to look at it really and when i heard uh, andrew burnett say that, I said, yeah that, that's a healthy way to look at a, you know a, a very tough opponent that's real close geographically and in your division Golden Knights will uh, also get better with the return of players that are on the horizon. Yes. Not sure when Jack Eichel will play. Uh, Alec Martinez is on this road trip. Uh, he hasn't played in a while, but is skating in uh, in regular practice drills. Uh, we've got Max Pacioretty uh, skating with the team. Uh, on the subject of Martinez, like there's a, a good chance that you might get half your blue line back in a four-game road trip which is mind-blowing. It really is. You know, Hag back already has a game-time goal mm -hmm. uh, in two games on back. 
White Cloud comes in last game, and if Martinez comes in between Thursday and Saturday, uh, there's the half you're talking about, and, and you're whole, right? And, and um, what a boost. I mean, you know, Alec Martinez, I mean, what? It, it'll probably take him a while. I mean, he's been out a long time. Um, but he's such a key piece. Mention him. He must be just chomping. <laughs> it's been a long gamer, time. Gamer, gamer. Right, and, and again, pers- you know, he's – He's an older player now, and so to play the the back half of the season into the what you hope is a very long postseason, um, not all bad in terms of timing and getting back and getting up to speed and and being fully ready for the playoffs. How big is the smile going to be when you watch <laughs> Patrietti and oh. Eichel and Stone out in the power play and Patrangelo and Martinez yeah. and Theodore? Right. You're really, who is going to be on yeah. the power play? Yeah. That top unit. I mean, you're going to only have one defenseman, I would think. Which one is it? <laughs> I know. Be- between those three guys. Because Martinez, with the one-timer, right. is a weapon. Exactly. And so you got Eichel. On, on, you know Eichel's coming off the left side. And you, you know. Pacioretty. On the right side. Yeah. And then you've got Stone somewhere down off the goal line. Who's in the bumper and who's the defenseman? Is Donov in the bumper? I don't know. Okay. I, we got we got some time. Uh, we do. We'll, we'll take a break. We'll talk about it during the commercial break, and uh, when we come back, we'll get into uh, some league history last night as well, and trying to connect with uh, Kelly McCrimmon in Florida. It's uh, nighttime at noon on Fox Sports Las Vegas.
Philadelphia Flyers uh, lost last night, but uh, Keith Yandel set the Ironman record for most consecutive games played in the National Hockey League, 965. That uh, impressive mark, it goes back four teams. One year he played 84 games because he was traded. He survived COVID. He did, the, the streak's amazing. So I want to uh, acknowledge that, uh, and we'll get back to it if we have time. But yeah. uh, right now I want to bring in uh, the general manager of the Vegas Golden Knights, uh, Kelly McCrimmon, who uh, I'm pretty sure was just pretending you couldn't hear me before because he's heard all my shtick before. Is that right? Uh, some of that is wrong. <laughs> uh, so, Kelly, uh, just give, it, give us an idea of, of what you uh, have seen so far on this road trip. And again, just uh, having difficulty connecting with uh, with Kelly, so we will... Uh, I can hear you now, Darren. Oh, there you are. There you are. Uh, nice. Uh, just uh, the three points in, in, in four games. Last, like, I know how competitive you are, but last night uh, was a pretty impressive effort in the back half of the game. Yeah, we uh, we did well to get a, get a point last night. You're down 3-1 in the third period against a really good team. Uh, I think you call that a good point. We got production from uh, the bottom half of our lineup, which – which was encouraging and something that you look for when uh, it's back to back because some of our top guys didn't have uh, the same legs last night and then uh, started the trip with a real solid win uh, in Washington. So we knew before the trip started that this is going to be a really difficult four game stretch and, uh, you know, pleased to have three of the four points so far. Kelly, Darren Elliott here. I'll go big picture uh, with all the adversity and different guys in and out of the lineup. How do you, from your perspective, evaluate the first half of the season thus far? Well, um, with some perspective, uh, for sure, Darren, and, and I think that's uh, you know, always a challenge for a manager. We uh, were day-to-day -day with uh, wins and losses and the state of your team and the personnel that uh, are playing or aren't playing, but I think you have to be able to step away from that and take a – you know, I call it the 35,000 foot view. And, uh, you know, I, I like the makeup of our team. I look forward to getting uh, healthy. I think in the meanwhile, we've seen a lot of opportunity for younger players. We've seen real good growth in some of those uh, players. You know, we were 50 points at the halfway mark, which I guess, uh, all things considered, uh, putting us on pace for 100 points, uh, I, I think was, uh, was good. And, uh, you know, for me, I've always felt it's about continuing.